And welcome back. This is Baller Scuba with another StarCraft 2 commentary. Yes, I do do these from time to time now. My opponent in this upcoming match is LOL Adrian Cat. I assume it's just Adrian Cat and LOL is the clan name. Uh, Adrian Cat is ranked 6th in his or her Diamond Division. 3,087 points, 471 wins, and 463 losses. And here we are in the game. I have spawned as the Red Terran in the south up against Lol Adrian Cat. Lol Adrian Cat is the blue Zerg player in the east. The map is the Shattered Temple. And oh man, I've been out of this for a few days now. Um, I, I hope you guys did see that update video pretty much. I'm not going to be focusing my channel on StarCraft 2 anymore. I'm going to be instead focusing on the Let's Plays, both Fallout 3 and Super Mario RPG, and whatever comes after that, we'll see. But StarCraft 2 is going to be taking a backseat for probably ever. Just, just saying that right off the bat. But I do want to give you guys uh, uh, you know, a little show that yes, I am still going to be doing this. Um, once again, I, I don't know how often I'll be doing these every once in a while, but this was, I thought, a great game, even though it's kind of short. You could probably tell it's kind of short by how long the game showed, or the video showed, when you clicked on it. You know, this is not going to be a 30, 40 minute game. No, this is, this is pretty short. Because, but it does show, um, some important details. So what we see here is I'm going for a barracks up front. The Zerg player is up to 14 supply so he needs to get something. Once he finds out this is where I've spawned it looks like he immediately went for the spawning pool and the extractor so you can see his strategy coming right now. Meanwhile it doesn't look like I have shown my strategy at all. Just the one barracks now. There we go. Gas is on the way and if you guys have been following my channel for some time you know what that means. I am going to be going for three racks. It is not necessarily this is not necessarily always going to be a three racks but in my case it almost always is. I decided that once again, once I saw the spawning pool, and he decided that once he saw my spawn location. So really, this is a response to his build. What I was originally planning to go for was a 2 racks expansion, but that had to be cancelled once I saw that spawning pool. And here he is going for the extractor steel. I had not actually seen this in quite some time. As soon as the spawning pool is up, he is going to be getting a queen, two pairs of zerglings, and an overlord. Uh, he will be chasing this SCV out. I assume that's what those four zerglings are for. Meanwhile, I am going for the bunker in the front of my base, completing the block off. You can't let those zerglings inside your base. They get a surround on this marine, and you're doomed. The most you can have at this point is two, maybe three marines. If he comes in with four or even six zerglings, you are doomed. And they'll get all the way into your SCV line, and then it's pretty much game over for you. So yes, you need to get that bunker up, because here come the zerglings. They did finish off my scouting SCV. He did let the extractor finish here. You're not really supposed to do that. You're just supposed to keep uh, canceling it and rebuilding it. And here the Zerglings come in, so I run to the bunker, scare them off, and then just kind of keep the Marine there just in case this thing will die eventually. It is off creep. What? What the hell? It's actually healing? What? That's not supposed to happen. But my second two Marines came out, so I put them in the bunker, moved this guy back to demolition duty, and he finishes off that extractor. Meanwhile, the Zerg player did finally go for the expansion here. He is, uh, it is pretty late for Zerg players. You want to get that out sooner. But he did get the Zergling speed. These guys do have their wings. And he did get an Involution Chamber going to go for melee attacks level 1. So he is pretty much set on sticking with the Zerglings for now, it looks like. Uh, he is just going to try to macro up. He feels he has map control thanks to his early aggression here. Two Zerglings are just going to hang out in the middle there. Uh, he did send a Zergling into the Zelnaga Tower in the middle. That is usually a great idea, but not necessarily on this map because as you can see... I there's a there's a clear rush that avoids 
the Zalmanga Tower altogether. If I went here, he would never know. He did send the Zerglings in to test out what was going on, and one of them died. So he scurries the other one back to his base. Once again, just trying to keep the pressure on there. He did not mean to actually do that much damage. In fact, he got I don't think he got any done. Um, that was all done beforehand. Um, he's just trying to scare me into staying into my base. That is what Zerg players want you to do early on so that they can secure the expansion, get the, the drones out. But no, looks like he's not comfortable with what he's gotten so far. And he is going for the Baneling Nest and for a lot of Zerglings. When he saw how much of an army I had, he felt like he needed to get the defense, and he does. And it looks like I'm going to be going for for a push here. Did I? No? Okay. I was thinking of, some, uh, of a different game. So I'm moving out with what small army I have. Zergling does not even get a strike off. He does have a few Zerglings out on the map. These guys are actually trying to secure the third expansion here between the two of us. That is a risky expansion, but something that probably against me is is very secure because I will probably never go and take that out. And I take out the Overlords because that actually does supply lock. And meanwhile, the Zerglings do come around. Finally, these guys don't have stim pack, so I, this is requiring absolutely no micro for me right now. I am so short on minerals. I have plenty of gas, but no minerals. So I'm moving into the mineral line here, and that's really to avoid him being able to continue mining from these minerals while I do damage to this expansion. I don't want him to get any income while I'm doing that. The Zerglings and a few drones run down, so I back off to the mineral lines. I'm preventing the surround here from the, the Zerglings and the drones. And there, that is the game he had to leave due to that. Looks like how many... He only had two larvae left. And did he have any army? He did not. He had one Zergling, of course, this one at the Zaldaga Tower. And the one queen and the rest were in drones. Uh, he was oversaturated here. That is because he had to transfer those guys out from the expansion. I have too much minerals and gas. I am going for the expansion, though. But no, I am not going... I never... Yes, I did get Concussive Shell started and Stim Pack. They were late. I need probably a fourth or a fifth racks and maybe a factory going. So once again, always looking to improve on my builds and my strategies. But this was a small back and forth game. I hope you guys enjoyed the little nuances in it. Uh, the Baneling Nest did go up, but he never really had time to get the Banelings going. Um, if he, even if he did, he would not have had any more Zerglings to clean it up if he had taken all the Zerglings, put them back here, morphed them all into Banelings, and then sent them down here. One, uh, my army would not ha would have come up a lot faster, and then two, there would no, not have been any Zerglings left. And if you just blow up all the Banelings and there's one Marauder left, you're still screwed. So this was a short game, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. I hope you laughed. I hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.